Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. Here's an interesting video, 5 tips for indie solo game developers. Let's watch it and I'll share my thoughts based on my 10 years of experience making indie games. Before we begin, just a quick mention, the Unity Humble Bundle is ending in about 2 days. This one is a great deal with a ton of tools and a bunch of visual assets. And the Unity Asset Store is also having their new year sale. Pretty much all of the top sellers, all of the best assets and tools, all of those are discounted. And there's even a coupon for an extra 10% off. Or specifically, if you're looking for low poly assets, then the Synthi Sale is also having their great holiday sale. As usual, it's their excellent style, so if you're a fan of it, definitely check it out. Hello, and welcome to my humble little channel. I am the sole developer of an upcoming 2D run and gun platformer titled Citadel Stormer 2. I have spent the last two years single-handedly working on this project. Right away, my tip would be don't spend two years working on a project, especially not your very first game. This is one of those, I would definitely call it a mistake that a lot of people fall through. My advice to you is do not spend that long, especially not on your very first game. You really gain a lot more experience by working on multiple games as opposed to just one single game where you spend tons of years. My advice is make quick games. At the beginning, make games on the scale of something like Flappy Bird or Snake, so something really small that you can build in one to two weeks. Then as you grow, perhaps start making games in three months, perhaps one for six months. I would only really encourage someone to build a game and spend two years working on a game, if that's like your fifth or sixth game. If you have quite a lot of experience, and at that point, spending that long might work. I've handled the coding, the art, the music and the design of the levels, enemies, bosses and various in-game objects. During this process, I believe I have gained a few valuable insights on what it takes to create a game from scratch. Tip 1. Stay focused. Don't get distracted by new ideas. Yeah, absolutely. Great tip. Lots of people, they've got an idea for the game, but as soon as they work on it for about a month, they suddenly get bored of that idea and they start wanting to add more things or work on something completely different. Being able to stay focused on actually focusing on your game and actually finish that one game before you move on to the next thing, that is one skill that you do gain with experience, so that's the good news. So if you have trouble with that, if you're constantly jumping from project to project, that is something you can definitely work on, you can definitely improve that. And I'm talking about switching from game idea to game idea, but the same thing can happen on the same project. You're working on one mechanic and suddenly you jump into a completely different mechanic than another one and so on. So being way too distracted, that can definitely happen in both terms of games as well as individual mechanics and systems. So yep, definitely do keep that in mind and don't get distracted way too much. Remember to stay focused, remember what is your initial goal with this game, what is the original idea, and only work on things that actually work towards getting that idea to completion. Once you have a general idea of what your game will be like, define your goals, create a checklist of tasks and focus on completing them. Yep, checklist, that is something that I highly encourage you to do. For me personally, that is one of the best productivity tips that I can give you. Working from a list, for me, I find that so much better rather than just looking at an empty Unity project and thinking, okay, where do I even start? If you have a to-do list, you just take some time in order to figure out what are the various items you're going to add into the list. And then when you're actually going to spend some time working on the game, you can just work straight from that list. So just look at one of those elements and pick, okay, I'm going to work on this one and that's it. Personally, I make to-do lists for just about anything. So all my daily tasks, I have to-do lists. My monthly goals, I have to-do lists. For my game that I'm currently working on, Dinky Guardians, for that, I have a to-do list of all the things that I need to do. So yeah, my advice to you, definitely make tons of lists. It's much, much easier to keep working and stay focused if you're working from a list. During the course of the project, you will keep getting new ideas. These new ideas can fall into two categories. The first category includes ideas that can be integrated into your current project, like a new weapon or enemy type. These are good. Make a note of them and add them to your checklist. Yep, whenever you get a new idea, I definitely encourage you to essentially do a brain dump. Just take that idea, take it from your brain, and actually write it down somewhere. If you keep it inside your brain, that is going to constantly keep you distracted. So just write down, keep a stack of paper of excellent ideas that you want to work either on your current game or whatever comes next. The important thing is take it away from your brain, put it on somewhere else where it does not distract you. The second category consists of ideas for a completely different game. These are bad. However, the freshness and novelty of those ideas may tempt you to abandon your current project and start a fresh new one. Ideas for new games aren't necessarily bad. Again, as long as you don't constantly jump from project to project. So if you have a game idea for something completely different that you would like to do, I would definitely encourage you just write that down, the idea somewhere. Either write it down on paper or just open a simple text file on your computer. Personally, I have tons of ideas all over the place. I've got lots of papers with lots of random game ideas. I've got notes on my phone. I've got notes on my computer. So once again, whenever you have some idea for something a little different, the important thing is take it away from your brain and put it somewhere so it doesn't distract you. 
you can do that, then go back to being focused on your working on your current game. And when you finish that, then you can revisit that list of ideas and figure out what to work on next. Based on the exciting new concepts that have just popped into your mind. But do not take the bait. Because doing so would completely negate all the time and effort you have already invested in your original goals and put you right back at the starting point of the game dev process. Furthermore, even if you choose to pursue the new project, there is no guarantee that you won't later abandon it to pursue a newer and fresher set of ideas. Yeah, again, that's a problem jumping from project to project, so definitely make sure you don't do that. In the end, you would have spent all that time and effort doing game dev but have nothing to show for it except a pile of unfinished games. Tip 2. Don't neglect the not so enjoyable parts of the project. Like any other creative endeavor, game dev has both fun and non-fun parts. Yeah, for me, the non-fun parts, those would be handling music and sound effects. For some reason, that is something that I absolutely hate to do. I really hate cycling through dozens or hundreds of sound effects in order to find whatever matches whatever I'm working on. I always hate working with music, trying to figure out what music actually fits my game. Another thing that I really dislike is all of the artwork that is required in order to make something like a Steam page, in order to make screenshots. That is always something that I really dislike doing. But again, it must be done if I want to release the game. The game needs to have screenshots. It needs to have a trailer, which is another thing that I really don't like doing. It needs to have music, sound effects. So yep, definitely game dev can be quite a lot of fun. There are definitely a lot of things that I really enjoy. I love making new systems. I love writing tons of code. But if you want to finish your game, yep, there are some not so fun parts that you will have to push through. The fun parts are usually the easy and more enjoyable tasks. Examples of these would be making conceptual sketches, writing lore, generating new ideas and so on. While these things are important in their own right, as a solo developer, be careful not to get too caught up in them. It creates the illusion of being productive but at the end of the day, you'll have nothing to show for it. A notebook full of concepts and game ideas is worthless if those ideas aren't implemented in a game project. Yeah, again, I mean, you do have to go through the not so fun parts. You can't just procrastinate on them. Some things, they must be done, no matter whether you like to do them or not. A game has to be a complete package in order to actually be a complete final game. So just remember that making games isn't always going to be super fun. When you spend too much time on the fun parts, you usually end up neglecting the less glamorous yet vital tasks such as coding and debugging, tasks that are essential to ensure that it... And again, it's really funny how personal preference he mentions coding and debugging as negatives. Personally, that's the part that I love the most. <laughs> so yeah, it's just funny how everyone has different tastes, everyone has different things, everyone has different definitions of what is the fun and not so fun parts of game development. Game functions as intended. While the fun parts may be enticing, neglecting the fundamental technical aspects can undermine the overall quality and functionality of the game. It is important to strike a balance between enjoying the creative aspects and giving due attention to the critical back-end work that brings the game to life. Approach the project holistically and divide your tasks appropriately. Allocate dedicated time for the dull and boring stuff, even if it's not as enjoyable for you. Yeah, again, definitely remember you do have to do the not so fun parts. So my advice is just add them to the list. And at some point, one day when you feel nice and strong, go ahead and just second those. Just spend one day trying to get to as much of the non-fun part as possible. Get through those and just remind yourself, okay, I'm doing the not so fun parts so I can actually finish the game, which is the ultimate goal. Remember that the dry back end work is crucial to bring your artistic vision to life and ensure you have a functional game in your hands. Yep, remember what is the ultimate goal. Without those not so fun parts, you cannot release the game, so just push through them. Learn to balance the fun and challenging aspects of development. Tip three, don't start peripheral activities like video devlogs. It's tempting to start a devlog or even a YouTube channel dedicated to showcasing progress on your game in video format. Yeah, this is a tricky one. On the one hand, I understand the, the advice, which is basically don't get distracted. It's basically the same advice. And of course, time is very limited. So should you spend your time on things outside of your game? The answer is sort of, sort of not. I guess that depends on what are your goals with the game. Because if your goal is to actually find success, like financial monetary success, if so, then marketing is something you cannot neglect. It is one of the most important things. It is extremely difficult. And making devlogs, making a YouTube channel, making YouTube shorts, TikToks, whatever. Making all of those things is all part of marketing, which is part of making a successful game. Now, if you're just doing it as a hobby, if you're just doing it for fun, then sure, you can ignore all of that. You don't have to worry about marketing. But if you want to make games as a profession, if you want to make it a career, then marketing is something you absolutely need to do. And devlogs are one of the most straightforward ways to do it. So, yep, it does take time. It does take quite a lot of time away from game development. I should know, I mean, balancing this channel, making all these videos and working on my Steam game, that is definitely being quite challenging, quite difficult. 
But I know that if I don't do that, then the game will simply not find an audience at all. So yeah, it is really difficult in order to balance. It takes a ton of time, it takes a ton of work, a ton of effort. But in today's world, the reality is simply you have to do that. There's simply no way. If you want to find success with your games, then marketing is something you must do. It sucks, it takes a lot of time, but it simply must be done. I've seen many solo devs do it in the hopes it may draw attention to their game. But the cold fact is that unless you already have a substantial following on YouTube, maintaining a video devlog is an absolute waste of time and energy. I disagree with that. I mean, I agree that it is extremely difficult. I mean, YouTube is pretty much just as saturated as Steam is. So it definitely is extremely difficult in order to stand out with a devlog. You've got to bring something really special, really unique. So I don't disagree with the fact that it's really difficult. But like I said, it is something that must be done. I mean, any kind of marketing must be done. And devlogs are simply the sort of easiest way to do marketing or the most straightforward one. At the same time, that is really great feedback. I mean, if you're making devlogs about your game and nobody's watching them, nobody's clicking on them, perhaps that might mean that you simply haven't yet learned all the skills required in order to be successful on YouTube. Or perhaps it might mean that your game idea perhaps isn't quite as appealing as you'd like. So that can also be some very useful feedback in order to decide, should you spend a lot more time on this game or not? It goes back to what I mentioned in the beginning, should you spend years working on a game? I would say if you can't get traction on your devlogs, then absolutely do not spend years or several months working on the game. Take that as feedback because if people are not interested in watching your devlogs, that is a sign that they will not be interested in actually playing the final game. Let me explain. First, attracting viewers and growing your channel from scratch is an uphill task. This is due to YouTube's algorithm favoring established creators. Uh, that is not quite the case anymore. Over the past few years, the past, I don't know, five, seven years, YouTube has definitely changed. Previously, the amount of subscribers were a huge amount. There was a huge impact. If you had millions of subscribers, you would guarantee millions of views. Whereas nowadays, that is no longer the case. Nowadays, with just a single video, you can definitely pop off. You can definitely go viral. It is definitely difficult to grow on YouTube. Like I said, it's pretty much as saturated as Steam is. But thankfully, nowadays, if you come out of the gate with just one really excellent devlog, and if your game idea is actually appealing, and if you study the basics of YouTube, the basics of how to make a good title, a clickable thumbnail, if you do that, you can definitely find success. It is really difficult, but it is possible. So it's quite likely that you'll be making videos that not many people will discover, let alone watch. If that's the case, the question of growing your channel goes out the window. Lastly, there is zero to little guarantee that all your endeavors in running a YouTube devlog would result in tangible benefits, such as publicity, fan acquisition, or sales of the final product. One really interesting thing that I've noticed since pretty much making this channel is that there's actually a big difference between a game dev audience and a game playing audience. Initially, when I first started this channel, one of the goals behind it was essentially, basically I'm going to use the knowledge that I've gained over the past, I don't even know, 10 years making games, use that in order to teach you how to make games. And as a result, the audience that will enjoy learning from those videos, they will then pick up my games and that will help my games become more successful. But what I have found since then is that, yep, there's a big difference between a game dev audience and a game playing audience. So my audience on this channel is more towards the game dev audience, which means it doesn't really convert into game players as much as you would think. Whereas on the other hand, there's, a, for example, a channel like Danny that is pretty much on the entertainment side as opposed to game dev side. So that one attracts much more game players as opposed to game developers. And in that case, it does convert very well. Considering these factors, there is little justification to believe that a YouTube devlog warrants the expenditure of time and effort. All that said, a YouTube channel would be useful to store trailers and gameplay footage to share when needed. But creating highly edited devlogs can be a significant drain on resources. And if you must document your progress, consider using a simpler platform such as Twitter, which allows you to reach a wider audience. Oh, now that is very bad advice, I would say. Like I was saying a while ago, the difference between a game dev audience and a game playing audience from all the stats that I've seen, Twitter is not a place to find a game playing audience. If you go on Twitter and you post a bunch of GIFs on things like Screenshot Saturday or Wishlist Wednesday or whatever, if you do that, you will reach quite a few people, but those will be, once again, those will be game developers and not game players. Twitter is actually the absolute worst place to find players for a game. In terms of marketing, Twitter should be at the very bottom of your list. And in terms of essentially wasting resources by making devlogs, on the one hand, yep, that is true. I mean, if no one watches your devlogs, then that's a little bit of a waste. But at the same time, like I said, if you want to find success nowadays, you need marketing. And if you don't market your game, then essentially all the effort you put into your game will essentially be wasted. Tip four, don't hyper-focus on one thing. Instead, cover all things. 
For any dedicated game developer, it is natural to strive for presenting their game in the best possible manner. However, this pursuit can sometimes turn into an endless cycle of polish and refinement. A developer may focus on perfecting and fine-tuning various aspects of their game, often beyond what is necessary or practical. Yeah, I would definitely say don't over-focus on over-polishing just one particular aspect of your game. Remember, in order for it to work, it has to work as a whole. So make sure the entirety of the game is not essentially the same level of quality, the same level of complexity. If you like, make your gunplay feel extremely polished, but your enemies are essentially just prototype enemies that won't feel very strange, very off-putting. So yeah, do make sure you spend the same amount of effort on pretty much every part of your game, or essentially based on how important that part is to your game. And at the end, definitely do make sure to polish. Polish is an extremely important thing. And do make sure you polish pretty much every mechanic as much as possible. While attention to detail and quality are crucial, becoming fixated on incessant polishing can lead to delays and a lack of progress. While dedicating lots of time to perfecting one particular aspect of a game, for example, the main character's design or a specific art asset, can result in a polished outcome. It ultimately becomes futile if other crucial elements of the game are neglected. In the grand scheme of things, focusing excessively on one aspect of your game while neglecting others hinders progress. Yep, definitely. I mean, it is very important to polish things, but not to the detriment of everything else. Hyper-focusing on one task eats into your time and prevents you from completing the hundreds of other tasks that your game needs. Remember, there's no point in perfecting one thing if the other things in the game do not get made. A single task, no matter how important, should not take up all your time. Yep, again, remember the game is composed of a whole. It is composed of a multitude of systems and mechanics all working together. So you cannot, for example, just spend your entire dev time just making the shooting feel great. If there are no enemies to shoot at or no levels to explore, then it doesn't really matter if the shooting works because it needs a whole in order to actually make a final complete the game. Tip 5. Don't rely on motivation. Cultivate discipline instead. This is definitely a tip that I highly, highly agree with. Something that I've mentioned many times, yep, do not rely on motivation. Motivation is something that is very ephemeral. It comes and goes, you have no control over it. It is great when motivation comes and things become super easy, but the development of a game, even if you make a short game, even if you make something on like three to six months, you will definitely not stay motivated for that whole time. So my advice is definitely do not rely on motivation. Make sure you rely on discipline instead. Once again, work from a list. Make sure you have a list of things that you need to do and just go ahead and do them one by one, whether you feel like it or not. The journey of game development is a difficult one, filled with hurdles that can easily wear you out, demoralize you, and cause you to abandon your goals. Motivation is essentially an emotion and can increase or decrease depending on external factors. There will be times when motivation disappears altogether. Yep, I mean, game development is a long journey. It is really difficult. It involves a ton of work and involves a ton of systems, a ton of different unique skills. And motivation just comes and goes, you can't really control it, so yep, do not rely on motivation. If you want to finish your game, then take that seriously and actually work on it, actually finish it step by step, day by day, no matter how you feel about it. In contrast, being disciplined is a mindset. It is a way of living or seeing things that pushes you to get things done. It can be considered as an engine that propels you forward and sustains you throughout the entire journey. Discipline is the source of other qualities like perseverance and dedication. Discipline is the secret to success in any field, game development included. When you feel worn out, motivation disappears, but the discipline that you have cultivated will drive you to continue working on your game project. Yep, definitely. When motivation disappears, it's up to you to rely on self-discipline. Although at the same time, I should say, do not take it to the other extreme, meaning to the point where you're focused so much on self-discipline to the point where you actually start to feel bad about yourself when you eventually fail. We're all human, no one is perfect, so even if you rely on self-discipline, there will be times when no matter how much you try, you simply cannot do it, you simply cannot force yourself to do it. And when that happens, the answer is really just accept it, just say, okay, suddenly this happened, suddenly today I cannot push myself through it. Just do that and accept it, as opposed to essentially just punishing yourself for not being able to do something. If you do, that will not help in any way. That will just make you feel like crap, which in turn hurts your development on the next day and so on. So do rely on self-discipline, but when you eventually fail to force yourself to work, when that happens, just accept it and move on. Do not punish yourself when something goes wrong. I believe these tips will help you solo game developers avoid fatigue, stay organized and ensure that you reach your game development goals. All right, so yeah, that was the video. That was pretty interesting. Lots of interesting topics. So yeah, to the developer, best of luck with Set the Dawnstormer 2. I hope you found it interesting to hear my thoughts. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. And don't forget to check out the links in the description for the excellent sales. This humble bundle adds in just two days, so if you want it, definitely get it quickly.